Welcome back to Making History in Kerbal Space Program, and it's time to, well, get ready for Duna at some point soon. We've got 25 days left to go, and that's something we do need to um, take care of. Now, in order to do that, I think I'm going to test a new lander design, and we've been given a mission to plant a flag on the moon and science data from space around the moon. So, moon is uh, an ideal, as, as NASA are trying to get through, uh, ideal test bed before you head across to Mars slash Dunya. And uh, as such, we should take a look at a, uh, a new lander. So here is the Mark III lander. It is much bigger. Uh, if you have a look down here, we have a mainsail instead of a skipper. We have our usual uh, quad arrangement of boosters. And if we pop in here, you'll see uh, something that looks a lot different from our previous boosters, uh, of a previous lander even. Uh, we've got a few things with our science. We've got now extendable and retractable photovoltaic. Oh wow, photovoltaic panels or solar panels, and they are on the lander can Mark II, which has got a, a giant here, uh, basically a giant bit of cork on the front, as, acting as a heat shield. And behind that, we've got a science bay. Behind that, we've got another science bay in there, and that's that's got a, an experiment canister in it. And if we just have a look in here, you'll see there's some experiments. But more importantly, what you may um, have problems seeing is what's exactly going to come back to the planet. Because this doesn't detach from everything else. There isn't a, a separator there. So all of this ideally would come back. Yes, exactly. This may not work. <laughs> so we've got a service bay here, two and a half meters. All that should come back, hopefully, as should this and below there you'll see a decoupler so this entire section at the bottom should detach these are attached to the bottom and this is attached to the top so this should sort of separate into two halves uh they're currently interlocked almost and uh, then that hopefully should come back so let's get on the way and see whether this design works it's worth testing we've got on board val and bob hopefully yes val and bob and they, this is our practice run for Duna, so we have 7,200 meters per second. I think that's around the right amount for Duna. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments if it isn't. And uh, yeah, we've got that coming up in 25 days. So we've got to be fairly snappy about going to the moon and back. Uh, that, that's going to take a week by itself. So, you know, we don't get too many tries at that. Let's get going. I think this, let's just check the staging is going correct. We can just drag those in. Shortcuts that. And then does this... Uh, yeah, we can put those into the same stage. There we go. And save and go. Okay, so hopefully the usual takeoff. We'll, we'll see. This is like a giant ram um, at the moment because basically I don't have the 3.75-meter three, three tanks anywhere. Uh, I've only got 2.5-meter, so this is the uh, this bottom one is the, the Jumbo 64, the big orange tank that happens to now have different textures available to it in making history so on top of that because the entire lander is two and a half meters it has to come out of ways to fit the fairing around it go and off we go it goes up which is uh <laughs> which is a good thing the go up a five as the uh the saturn five is known for xkcd fans but uh yes in this case uh we are probably gonna throttle back a little bit but uh head up on into orbit and here we come towards orbit, much more sort of cylindrical sort of uh, rocket. And we can start reducing our thrust in uh, vanilla, of course, unlike uh, RSS. And keep our time to apo just ahead of us, which is pretty much perfect. We can keep that going. And uh, there it is, it's gonna, gonna come in again. We can stay at apo, which is 85. And then that will quickly let us bring our periapsis up and we can just adjust our tilt here a little bit just to keep ahead of the apo and that will work just fine i think here we come so is 70 60 and we can probably increase the speed now to be honest we're close enough that it doesn't matter there you go so we get through zero we go 10 20 etc 50 70 okay so 89 by 85 perfectly fine and serviceable orbit. Now out we need to go to the moon and how much delta V have we got left in this stage? Let's take a look at the vessel 
Uh, stage two, we got, uh, well, stage three, actually, at the moment, we got 1,200. That should do us just fine. Let's uh, plot a course out towards our friend, the moon. Let's uh, get you in there. Set as target. Fine. And we will, you know, well, uh, it's going to be back here somewhere, isn't it? So add a maneuver. Um, oh, actually, I will show you one feature. Not that I generally use this one, uh, to be honest, but I will show you one feature of MechJeb. You may already know of it, but if not, don't worry. Uh, maneuver Planner. So you can set this to do a few things. We could choose Home and Transfer to Target. We already selected the moon as the target. And we can schedule the button next transfer window. It'll create a, a maneuver node for you. Uh, we're not going to worry about executing it because it can automatically execute it for you. How, because yeah, it's not going to be quite right. If we go across to uh, to here, it generally plots things so it aims it right at the moon instead of uh, instead of missing it slightly. So you're probably going to want to just adjust this a little bit this way. Well, you can go the other way if you want free return, uh, but we're not going to do free return. We need to land on it, which is another thing. So uh, that will do just fine. And so we can just point at the node and that is going to be in 30 minutes. So I don't even need to worry about doing anything except. Yeah. Look at that. We've actually got extendable solar panels and they should turn to look at the sun. They are. That's not terribly great at the moment because, uh, yeah, we're not really pointing in the right direction for that. But uh, we can always come back and point to the direction we want to when we come around again. So that is fine. Let's just stop ourselves there. And we can get lots of nice solar power, hopefully. Uh, where's my electric charge? Yeah, 100 electric charge. I think for the Juno mission, I should probably put some extra batteries on here. Uh, it may help if we go behind the shadow of something and we're not going fast enough to recover again afterwards. We definitely don't want to lose electric charge. So having a battery or two on there will help. So off we go to the moon. And here we are right at the moon. We have sort of an idea of where we want to go. That's one of our previous uh, craft. I think that was the first sort of satellite that just landed on its engine. Um, so maybe somewhere around there and gather some science. We've still got our AJ-10 stage. It's only got about 400 Delta V left in it. That will be more than enough to break us quite significantly. So let's just break a little bit. You see what I mean? So I've even got still got 300 meters per second there of Delta V remaining. So that's uh, going to take us quite a, quite a fair ways. So if we just warp ourselves around, one of the biggest, uh, well, let me just turn off you. Stop getting notifications. Uh, one of the biggest things with the moon, of course, is that it's, it's quite bumpy and it takes a lot more Delta V to slow down. That also means that uh, we have some issues. These uh, these little tiny little twitch engines here. Yep, there they are. They're not very powerful. They're more than enough to stop it on the moon, but they do have require a lot, um, a lot more burning before we get to, like, for example, compared to Mimbus. So we have to do burns of 120 seconds instead of 10. But what we can actually do is use it to break quite a lot. I've already used it a little bit just to bring us our, our speed down. And we're going to do the same thing again before we lose it. Around about here is fine. I don't want to go into that crater or near the edge of that crater. So I'm just going to go try and get, get, get us to go more straight down than we are at the moment. So let's just position ourselves just so we're going to push that retrograde marker back that way to go straight down. And let's just use up the remaining fuel. Our, qu our speed is quickly bleeding off, but that's only because we've got this huge engine. There it goes. Bye bye. And now we're on to these uh, tiny, little, uh, tiny little engines, which are quite loud. Let me just move a little bit further away there. And off that goes. That's going to hit the surface. And we are slowing down nicely. So now I want to try and pick a landing site. Uh, <laughs> This one sort of downside of KSP, I need some kind of uh, indication of um, how smooth the ground is or how level the ground is more to the point. And uh, you don't really get that until you're a lot closer to the ground. So, <laughs> so I'm going to skip forward a little bit until we're closer to the ground and we'll try and slow us down as we get further down there. And then we should hopefully be able to come in for a, a decent landing, if not an amazing one, but uh, a decent landing. And I'll just push that marker further towards the straight up vector. So onwards towards the ground. 
and that's not necessarily the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> We've got two craters here, and well, maybe I'll come down in this one. Uh, I may have to do a short hop when we get a lot closer to the ground. Uh, you'll see that my estimated burn is inside my impact time. That's a good thing, although you want them to be close to each other for a complete suicide burn. Um, however, even better burn time doesn't get this right. Even if you do them exactly at the same time and burn, do a full burn, it's still not uh, completely accurate. It's still, you know, on the cautious side. So, you know, do bear in mind that is going to happen. And uh, we will just point ourselves in that direction. It looks like we're going to be coming down in this crater somewhere. So I'm going to just cut this off for a second and we'll get a little bit closer to the ground. And hopefully it won't be too bad. And then we come, last 10 seconds, uh, bring our speed all the way down. I tried to steer us a little bit towards the center of this uh, this crater, but uh, whether that's going to be successful, you still can't really tell until you're on the ground or close enough to. So let's just continue to burn, bring our speed down, and hopefully this incline won't be catastrophic. Nine meters per second. Let's bring ourselves a lot closer in speed. You see, it's still fairly inclined. And that's never good. Nope. Nope. Oh. Oh. Please stop. Please stop. And perfect. Yep. Perfect landing. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, which direction do I need to go to tip ourselves back up? We don't have a winch. So... <laughs> And I don't want these, these solar panels to be in any way problematic. So I want to turn around so our landing legs are towards the downhill and we should come back down onto them. Good, good, good. This is how Kerbal Space Program is supposed to be played. You'll see that's quite downhill. What I don't want to do is tip ourselves all the way over because as soon as I do, it's going to start rolling end over end. And that's, that's not going to be good. As long as I can tip ourselves over when we're about to leave, yeah, that, that's good. All right, it's time to get some science from here. We've got lots available. Crew report, temperature scan, pressure, mystery goo, seismic, which is a, which should be a big one, material study. So let's go for the material study. And let's just, in fact, go for all of them. Okay, and we're going to keep them all. So 12, 60, 48, 28, 24, 20. Let's keep all of those. And in here, if we just open these doors, I like them to be sort of like a, um, a concertina kind of door rather than opening out was like that. We can just put this over here, close these back up again, and then we can collect all of that data because uh, well, we don't need to go out with our scientists to go and collect it all from everywhere, which is great. However, our scientist does need to go out, Bob, <laughs> for the EVA report on the surface sample. Oh my, where's the ladder? Um, well, where's the entrance to this? It's going to be facing down, isn't it? There it is. Yep, so EVA. And, he, well, it's close enough to actually do that from the ladder, I guess. Uh, EVA report and a surface sample. But our mission says he has to get out and plant a flag on the moon. So, I go. Oof. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, Bob is... I think that's the first uh, first Kerbal on the moon. I may have done it in a previous episode, but I don't think so. It was certainly not with a lander this size. So we can plant a flag. And down it goes. There we go. One small step for Bob. And there we go. So that should be enough for our mission. It is. That gets us more than funded for the uh, the Juno mission. We're up to 604. I was on 540, and that was even after spending quite a lot of money. And now we should go back. We, this is definitely not a hopper craft. We, we don't have enough Delta V to move around the moon too much. So let's see if we can get over. Uh, yep, that's Midlands. Let's just get a review. And turn on your RCS, Bob, and see if you can get back in. You shouldn't take very much. Whoop. Can you just grab on? Can you just grab on? Grab? No? Grab? I know you want to. Whoop. See, there you go. And now you've fallen down again. Bob, get up. Grab. There you go. And you can board. Now all we've got to do is take off. <laughs> well, first of all, collect everything. 
and that will be fine. And then, of course, if there was anything else that we can get while, once we've taken off, we can certainly do so. Um, and then recollect it again. So uh, that's fine. I'm not going to retract these doors just by sheer happenstance. They happen to be really good as, as stabilizers. This is why you may want much wider landers than I've been going. So um, I, the only problem with those is they don't fit inside the rocket fairings any longer. So need bigger rocket fairings, bigger rockets, etc. If I had the 3.75 meter, I would probably put these tanks on the outside here and then use the legs outside of those because there's a much wider platform to land on. Uh, or indeed, you make the lander a lot smaller on top of a stage this size. So your choice. But uh, I wanted lots of stuff on this thing and uh, lots of stuff it'll be. So let's take off, shall we? Uh, uh, which, which direction is... No, that's turning. That's turning. It's going to be this one. Okay, so let's just push upwards. Can we get ourselves to tip up onto our legs? Well, what we can do to accomplish this is we can retract this leg. Oh, no, that's retracting them all. Didn't want to do that. Did not want to do that. We're going. It's fine. We're going, guys, <laughs> and we're going in this direction, uh, and now straight up. There we go, and now we're going east, because that's where we want to go uh, to head back home. So everything's fine. Yeah, uh, we didn't even lose anything. Huh. Well, what do you know? So let's close you up and uh, continue heading off towards orbit, I guess. And of course, there is one thing to remember. We're going to need to send Bob EVA again. And we're not even in orbit yet, we're just doing a hop. And uh, Bob's going to have to go down a little bit and reset this. Because we can't do that, unfortunately, remotely. However, once we get back inside, we can then do another material study. And keep that. And then collect that. And job is done. So we can get out again if we wanted to and just do the same thing again. Because, you know, Bob's thorough. He wants to make sure everything is in its place. Back in you go. And we have the ability to take that experiment if we wanted to again. Not that we do, but now, before we crash back to the surface, it would be handy if we get into orbit. And here we are approaching orbit. Our periapsis is coming up. Our APO is around 17, and that is going to be just fine. Our time to APO is increasing quite rapidly now. Uh, we've got enough fuel left. We've got 1,000 Delta V left. That'll be enough to get us back from the moon, no doubt. And up we come through the periapsis, through zero. And then our time to up is a bit crazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just enough to get us above the any kind of mountains, 15 kilometers should be fine. So now uh, I guess we can use this to use the return from moon feature if you want to see how that works. Uh, just as we've been doing manually for the last few episodes, there's not much extra to, th to it. You just want to select um, a return from a moon, create a node, and uh, it, it's going to try and get us down to, um, well, that's actually nowhere near where I want to get down to, but it will certainly uh, be as efficient as it can. It needs 214 meters per second. That is perfectly fine. And um, yeah, we will fly that one. So I, we're, we're almost where the node is, in fact. We just have to go around once. I guess we could even make it back now. But uh, we'll go around once, do the usual flyback, and then I'll meet you just above the atmosphere where we'll see whether this heat shield effect works. Otherwise, um, yeah, we might have a bit of a problem. And here we come back towards Kerbin. And now this is where things are going to change a little bit. Normally, we come in first like this, where our engine unit is here, and get rid of it, you know, somewhat like this. Oh, uh, ooh. I mean, it's a, uh, uh, that's, that's, that's not working uh, uh, particularly well. It's fine. <laughs> I may need to move these tanks a little bit further out for our junior journey. I think they're, they're interfering. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, they're sort of locking this, this unit in here. That's, that's not great. Ooh, let's try and turn this around, shall we? Um, hmm. Let's just spin ourselves around. Yep, uh, in fact, no, I want, <laughs> I'm set on retrograde. I want to set on prograde, actually. Okay. 
<laughs> that's, that's not letting us do things very well. Uh, yeah, all this is now detached, so we have no control over it. So it looks like we're going to be bringing this in no matter what. Our parachutes, however, are here. <laughs> so the, all of this needs to clear. Um, this, this bay is fine, but these parachutes are, are around this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to rework that. They should all be essentially detached, though. So one thing we can do now, we get, once we get close enough, is re just retract our solar panels. But we do need to get close enough to uh, Kerbin itself. So let's fast forward. Oh, and while we're in fast forward... Oh, there it goes. Look. Goodbye. Goodbye. Um, yeah. Hello, physics. That's, that's how physics works in Kerbal Space Program. And uh, in we come. We're going to get towards the atmosphere. That's going to be significantly uh, off our, you know, our trajectory, so we shouldn't have much of a problem. Uh, we're going to get towards 100 kilometers, there or thereabouts. Okay. And this is going to point us head first, so then let's retract our solar panels. In they come. And now we see just how much of this stuff burns off when it comes into the atmosphere. <laughs> That heat shield should protect us now that we've got rid of our uh, our anomalous uh, sort of uh, engine section. And we'll see how it goes. So, in we come. Let's just accelerate it a little bit. And hopefully three of these parachutes is enough to slow this craft down. Otherwise, well, we're in for a very bad upside-down landing in probably the ocean. Although, we may actually be coming down over land. Um, no ocean. In fact, well, it's east of Herbal Space Center, so that is fine. We're just about to pass over it right now, in fact. So we can way high all the way down there. You can just about see the tiny, tiny landing strip as uh, we come in. So a little bit earlier and we could have, you know, maybe got closer. But uh, that'll do for now. What is actually burning up? That is hopefully not our lander can because it is protected by a heat shield. Although Kerbal's um, physics are never... Never exact. Oh, that's not good. Oh, no, it's given up now. That's fine. Oh, nope, that's our engine section. Please don't. Please not debris field. Please not debris field. That's fine. That got nowhere near us. <laughs> okay, let, let, let's head down into the atmosphere. Let's head down into the atmosphere. And here we are, everything survived <laughs> that violent re-entry. We can lose the, uh, the we, can, we can jettison the heat shield entirely. So, um, well, our parachutes are now safe to deploy. So if we jettison the heat shield, it's going to stick to us until we actually slow ourselves down, which is what this will do. And then as soon as these fully deploy, this will just fall off the bottom. It shouldn't, uh, it's just basically dead weight at this point, which we, we don't actually need and we certainly don't want. So let's get ourselves cl much closer to the ground. And let's see if three of those parachutes will do the job. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that. So eight, seven, six, five. I think these open around 800 meters or so, something like that kind of line. All right, so 2,000, 1,000. And they should be opening. And there goes our heat shield. And it should hit the ocean quite fast. And we're at 6.8 meters per second, which it should be just fine for an upside down head for slant again. I, I really, really hope. Let's just fast forward and, and see whether that's the case. Uh, we should have a f quite a lot of science from this, which should get us unlocking a few more nodes. The more expensive nodes are 300 each now. We've got 246. We, sh we may even get two of those more expensive nodes, but we can also just take uh, pretty much all of the the um, 100 and, what, the 160 nodes, something like that. And then we come now, and hopefully this thing will float long enough for me to... Um, yep, 20... 10 and success success <laughs> work the second time it's fine and now we have 22 days until juno so we have 574 just short of two of those more expensive nodes but we can get an expensive node and a cheap node that is fine more importantly we got a lot of the um i think we got a lot of the parts back so uh we brought our lander can back we brought service bays back, the Science Junior. All of this saves quite a lot of funds. The, the seismic accelerator is quite um, quite expensive. So getting an extra 22,000 back from all of this stuff really does help. Whether we'll be able to do that on the Mars mission is something else entirely, but for this one, we can do it. So 
Bob is up to level two, and Valentina is is just you know she, she's over this. She's just finding it so easy, and uh, that will do. So let's take a look at what we can then spend our lovely science on. We've got a few things we can go for actuators. That's just the grabbing unit. That's boring. <laughs> it does work, and it's kind of handy for some cases, but uh, it's boring. We do get a decent mission for this landing gear, testing it out on uh, I think over Minmus or something along those lines. So we could do that, the large landing strut. The larger heat shield helps, but even further into that, you get uh, this inflatable heat shield that goes up to 10 meters. And that's one and a half tons. This one is 2.8. So this one is not only lighter, but um, it expands, it's inflatable. So it slows you down a, a great deal um, on places like Mars. So that's kind of handy. And specialized control, what do you give us? Uh, fly by wire avionics. Um, Better engines, monoprop tanks, nothing to be honest exciting there. All the stuff, exciting stuff is in here. So we've got nuclear propulsion. That's great for getting for much further out. We may not need it just yet, but it's, it's good for further out. We've got the large tanks here. So this is the uh, 3.75 meter tank. It's 40 tons. Um, winches, I could have done that on the moon. <laughs> Shielded docking ports, fine. Uh, that's... Airstream protective shell and uh, an inline clampertron. That's just lots of SSO, uh, SSTO stuff. Uh, we don't have much for the flight, so we're down to just three nodes really to select this. High power electrics, which shouldn't be all that necessary, although I may want a, a battery bank. We certainly won't need the XL solar array for a Duna trip. Um, this one gives us ascent, landing, and space plane options for MechJeb. Uh, you know, if you don't have MechJeb, that won't even appear. A small probe and the Octo 2, which is very nice for satellites. That's got lots of different guidance options. And field science. Field science gets us rover autopilots, the external command uh, seat, um, and the rover mate rover. So, um, yeah. <laughs> which one do, after this do I want? The Hex 2 is good. Rendezvous and docking, that's actually really nice if you just get later on and you get sick of uh, rendezvous. You know, we can't do research over 500 science. How much is the upgrade for this facility? Yeah. <laughs> We're not getting 500 science units just yet. So I guess we're going to have to pick one of these. Um, I think I may well go with unmanned tech or... No, in fact, no. I'll get the larger tanks. That just makes it easier on me to actually do that. And uh, then we've got 274 left, which I guess we could spend on some of these. I may just get this to get this mission and this other heat shield, even though the heat shield we really want is in this heavy landing one. So I'll take that one as well. And we're down to 114 science. We've had a dry run. So this, this means we need to do a few things just to improve our lander design. One thing is getting those tanks out of the way in here. So if we have a look at this, um, they're just gripping that center Bay, yeah, you see the clipping with it slightly, so it's causing physics issues. So what we can do is just move them out a little bit. So as long as it clips with this one, it's fine, but we don't want to clip with the center. And do we want to have any difference to this for the Juna lander? We're going to have around 7K Delta V, and we can certainly get out of Kerbin system quite easily. We can error break or try error breaking on Duna, probably around 13 kilometers or so like that. So we haven't covered error breaking yet, but essentially instead of breaking with these liquid fuel engines, we're going to break with this heat shield coming in and it's going to hit the atmosphere and it's going to bring us down, not to a landing. It's going to bring us, if you choose the right altitude, that is, it's going to bring us into an orbit. So um, it will go pass through the atmosphere. The other side of the orbit is going to come down. So instead of being an escape back out of Duna, it's going to come down into an orbit. So circularized by breaking in the atmosphere just by heat, uh, well, friction. And uh, then we'll have uh, we'll have an opportunity to, once we get up a little bit high in that orbit again, to bring the other side back up out of the atmosphere. And we can, we can circularize like that. We can bring our, um, our orbit through a few different times and get circular without spending much delta v at all at which point we can decide where we want to land and from the landing well hopefully get home um yeah <laughs> but i have to do some calculations on delta v and it may be quite tight so we may want to just have a bigger rocket in general trying to get us out of the atmosphere let me know what you think um and especially if you've been to juno feel free to put in comments below for anyone else watching 
and anyone else who uh, hasn't been to Juno before. A lot of players don't go outside of Minmus, the moon, uh, at all. Uh, the developers have said this in the past that they just don't don't leave. <laughs> it, it's not terribly hard to go out there, but you can strand things much much more easily out in the solar system. So we'll get to that next episode. I think we've got come up to 22 days left, which is more than adequate for us to design something. And in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. And I hope if you're joining the, joining the channel and you're subscribed, you're enjoying the new series on Station Ears, which is going pretty well. And of course, the various other series I've got going on the channel. So feel free to like, subscribe, share, etc. as normal. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time for hopefully Landy on Juno without tipping over on our side. See you next time.